Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. As you can see, I'm down here at my huge pile of logs. I got logs everywhere, and I decided I'm gonna mill some boards out of this because the price of lumber is so high right now. I just have like a little Alaskan chainsaw mill. Yeah, if you guys wanna see a review on that, I can do a review on it, it works great. Um, I went ahead and milled the top piece off. I'm gonna try to make two by fours, a lot of two by fours out of this log and this log. This is oak wood. Not sure what kind of oak, it's oak though. Um, but the, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to build a pull-up bar and a dip bar. I want to get back into exercising and working out, trying to feel a little better. Uh, so that's what the project for today is. We're going to make the 2 by 4s And I have a fence post that I'm going to use for the handles, and I'll show you that later. This whole project is going to cost me maybe $30 if you figure in the gas for my chainsaws. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to mill all this into 2 by 4s And the reason I'm going to use 2 by 4s I wanted to use uh, six by, or make 6 by 6s but what I'm going to do is just cut this into big blocks and then rip it down with my table saw to make sure everything's accurate. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, a table saw, I don't have anything to rip, you know, six inch wide pieces of wood. That's why I opted for the four inch. Uh, I could do it with my chainsaw. That's a lot of work and it's a lot of sharpening and gas and oil and all that. It'd just be a lot of, ugh, something just flew in my neck. But uh, it'd just be a lot easier to make two by fours. So that's what I'm doing. Let's get started. <laughs> Right here I have an edge guide attachment and I'm just squaring up the board and preparing it to uh, run through the table saw so that I can cut square 2x4s. The chainsaw mill that I'm using is uh, Grandberg Alaskan Sawmill. You can Google it. They have uh, mills made for various sizes mine's set up for like a 28 inch bar i'm pretty sure that's the size bar i'm using here anyways um and also the edge guide that i used was Grandberg as well The chainsaw that I'm using is a Husqvarna 372XP. It's a 72cc chainsaw and it's about the smallest size that I would recommend, uh, especially with a 28 inch bar. Um, if you've never used a chainsaw mill before, it's a slow process. It uses a lot of gas. Right here you can see I'm filling up after like the one and a half boards or so. Um, it uses a lot of gas, a lot of bar and chain oil. Um, you have to sharpen your chain a lot as well. Out of these four boards that I did, I really should have sharpened my chain on the the start of the fourth board. It dulled my chain pretty good. Um, I'm not using a ripping chain. That's also one of the reasons I'm going a little bit slower than usual. I'm just using a regular full house chain. Um, nothing special. This wood is still slightly wet. Um, it's been sitting out for well over a year but logs hold moisture for a really long time um, I'm gonna let all this stuff dry out when you see what I build in a little bit I'm gonna let it all dry for a while and then I'm gonna apply either a weather sealer to it to keep it from rotting or a stain sealer I haven't really decided yet um, but I have plenty of time to figure that out I don't know if you guys can see this or not. There's some deer. See the deer walking right there? And there's a, let's see if I can sneak up on it without scaring them. There's a good many of them over there. It's one, two, three. I know I saw five. There's another one back in there. Let's just get close enough to scare them. How about that? So you guys can see. See the tail? 
Oh, they see me. They're about to run. Maybe not. He's, she's looking right at me. And there she goes. Hey, there's another one. Right there. See that one? There's another one right there. There's two more. Let's see if we can sneak up on those and scare them so you guys can see. See them right there? There's two of them on the other side of the creek. There they go. They'll probably go that way. Let's see. Yes, there they go. I hope you guys can see that. If you can't, sorry, that was pretty cool though. Well guys, as you can see, I'm dirty and I'm sweaty and I didn't get as much wood as I would like. I actually ran out of gas. Um, I went through, like I only had a half gallon left anyway, so. But uh, I got four boards and I think they're, let's measure them right quick just so you guys can get an idea of what's going on. They're all about 17 to 18 inches wide and I cut them two inches thick. I'm gonna run them through the planer, make sure they're all square and everything. Um, look at the mess this makes. And while I was going through uh, the last board, it was time to stop anyway. I need to sharpen my saws and all that type of stuff. The last, the last uh, board, my blade, my chain was really dull. So, but I'm gonna take these logs up there, and I'm gonna cut them with a table saw. And then we're gonna run them through the planer, and then we'll try to figure out our dip bar and pull-up bar. Right here, I'm just running the slabs of wood that I cut with my chainsaw through the table saw to get, you know, straight edges on my two by fours. And I'm actually making them two inches by four inches. You know, regular two by four is not dimensional like that. Um, this went pretty good. There was one of the slabs was kind of warping. It was this one right here, actually. It was warping and pulling in as I was cutting it. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just kind of pinching the blade a little bit. I just worked it back and forth a few times, and it, you know, eventually cut through just fine. Um, right here, when I was planing, they planed pretty good, but where the wood was still kind of wet. I mean, it wasn't like soaking wet, but it was moist, you know. And the sawdust was coming out a little thicker than it would if it was completely dry. Um, and it actually clogged the planer up one time, and I had to. Luckily, this planer, this is a DeWalt planer, luckily it has a little tool and you can just remove four screws and then there's four little thumb screws on the inside and you can remove the little dust cover, whatever you want to call it, and unclog it. So it clogged up, but it only took me maybe five minutes to unclog it and I was ready to go again. So that was nice. So my battery died in the middle of me planing uh, maybe the last five boards or so. I haven't done anything. Um, I did go in and eat a pizza right quick because I was getting kind of hungry. But uh, I planed the last boards. I got them sitting right here. They look really good. It's crazy just a few hours ago these things were a big log, you know. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these things. And uh, I'm going to build a pull-up bar and a dip station like I said before. All right, guys. So it's the next morning. Um... I went ahead and cut the wood or cut a majority of the wood and assembled it and I'll go ahead and show it to you. I figured you guys didn't want to watch me cut wood and put things together. Um, I'll go ahead and show you everything and give you the measurements right quick on what I've got so far and uh, then we'll go from there. Here's what I've got so far. This is the pull up portion minus the bar up here. I've got the holes drilled as well. I'll go ahead and I'll go over that in a second. But um, the bar that I'm going to use is just like a fence rail. I got this from Lowe's. They sell it at Home Depot. I imagine any home improvement store. Um, I think it's one and five eighths. This is 1.66 inches here. It's just a standard fence rail. Um, and I was kind of wondering about the strength of this. I would imagine this is strong enough, but if it's not, um, it, like if I see it kind of flexing or bending, I'm going to fill it with concrete. Or you can put sand or dirt, whatever, just to keep it from collapsing on itself. That'll make it a lot stronger. And uh, I'm not going to do that. First, I'm going to first put it up there empty just to see and if it starts flexing or anything like that, I'll fill it up with concrete. Um, 
but I'm going to cut it about 50 inches. I'll go over the measurements here in a second. I'm going to cut it about 50 inches and then I'm going to put these end caps on it um, and just run like a self tap and screw through. But, um, and as you can see, I cut this in two by fours, but I uh, actually sandwiched together and they're a lot stronger doing it that way. I just put screws in it every so often. Um, but this portion right here is seven feet tall. And uh, I used four boards, obviously, because I sandwiched them together. Uh, I don't exactly remember these, so I'm going to go ahead and measure them right quick. I know this portion right here is four feet wide, because I wanted this to be four feet. Um, let's see if I can hold the camera and do this. These are about 25 inches. Let's see. Um, yeah, they're about 25 inches. You can get close. It doesn't have to be exact. But I just cut 45 degree angles there and there to match up with this and this. This bottom piece right here is 43 and a half inches. And uh, as you can see, the bottom piece is a full length board, right? But this, the top piece right here, because I sandwiched those together as well. Uh, the top piece, I cut out a section, the width of this board, just to just stronger doing it that way it holds together a lot better um, and the hole I use the hole saw and I'm not sure where I put that thing at here it is I use the hole saw and it is uh, one and three quarter inches and it ended up being perfect I've already slid the post in there and um, made sure it's gonna fit but I gotta go cut it right quick um, but, but other than that, that's the next step. I just got to cut this post or cut that metal post bar or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to get a rubber mallet and bang it in there. And then I'll put my end caps on, see if it flexes. If it flexes, I'll put concrete in it. If it doesn't flex, I'm good. I think I'm going to be good though, because I don't weigh like 165 pounds or something. So, but, uh, and after I do that, the pull up portion will be hundred percent complete. Um, I've got to figure out the dip portion. And I'll show you guys what I decided to do with that and give you the measurements and stuff as well if you want to do this. All right, guys, it's pretty much finished up. I got my uh, fence rail mounted and I did a lot of pull ups on it. Well, by a lot, I did like 20. And it didn't flex or anything. Um, and I even tried to do like close grip pull ups just to see if all the weight in the center would bend it. It didn't bend or flex. So I ended up not having to put any concrete in it um, to keep it in place. I just put these caps on there, I couldn't beat them on straight. So I put the caps on, put some self-tapping screws in it, and then to hold it in place on the inside, I put some self-tapping screws. Hope you guys can see that. I just did one on the bottom, one on the top, and I did the same thing with the cap. Just put a self-tapping screw in it. So that held that in place pretty good. And the pull-up portion is completed. And I also did the dip station. Um, this was all off that same piece. I cut that about 50 inches. And then the section that I had left over, I just cut it in half and it ended up being perfect for this. Um, I ended up just, uh, like I said, I, same size hole that I drilled up there. And I ran this, the rest of the post through it. And I put a self tapping and screw a top bottom, top bottom to kind of hold it so it doesn't slide in or, or you know, come out or anything. Um, it's not really going to come out while you're using it anyway. Um, for this, I'll get my tape measure and give you guys some measurements. Um, for the screws... Let me show you the screws I use. I just use decking screws for everything, three inches. I did it for everything, but you see the ones with the big heads on them? There, 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 there. And then I use the bigger screws to hold those two on as well. And the bigger screws are five sixteenths by five and one eighths. Um, you don't have to use those. That's just what I used because that's what I had sitting around. But I used those on the ones I showed you, and I used the uh, three-inch screws on everything else except for this right here on the bottom. See, I got these little L brackets. I don't know if that was necessary. I just added it just because. But on those two little L brackets, where did I put those screws? At? Oh, they're one and a half inch decking screws. And the reason I use one and a half inch is because this. I mean, I used the three-inch ones here, but right here I used the one and a half because this piece of wood's about one and three-quarter thick. Didn't want to go through that. But uh, let me get my tape measure, and I'll, I'll tell you what these measure. I did the same deal here, sandwiched those two together, and on the top, I just put one. Um, let me find my tape measure, and I'll give you these measurements right quick. Here it is over here. 
I know I said that like three times, but I really didn't know where it was. Um, and these measurements might be different for you because I'm shorter. I'm only like 5'10". So if you're like six feet something, you might want to add a couple inches to this. But um, the two pieces that are sandwiched, 44 inches roundabout. So that's these two and you need four for each side there. And this top piece is 26 and a half inches. And like I said, these are measurements that that's just what I used. You guys can come up with whatever you want for your, you know, I kind of made this for my height and my body, or I guess my height, that's the only thing that really matter. And um, maybe the width, if you were bigger, um, you might want to go a little bit wider, but for me, this size turned out perfect. Um, because I milled the wood, I didn't pay for wood. I have a heck of a lot of logs down there and I'm going to be making a lot of stuff with that because this turned out really, this is really pretty wood, turned out really well. I have less than $30 in this. The only thing I bought um, was that fence rail up there. I already had the screws and all that sitting around. I mean, I imagine there might be another 20 bucks or something for the screws. Um, so if I went and bought screws and everything, it probably I'd have around 50 in it. But for this right here, I already had those. Like I said, I got less than $30 in it. I'm really happy with it. This would have cost me probably between two and 300 maybe, maybe more, especially for something this quality. Um, I'm gonna get it moved in a minute and I'll show you guys, uh, show it you and, <laughs> I'll show you guys me using it. I got tongue twisted there. Um, I'll do some pull-ups and do some dips, kind of show you guys. Hopefully I can do more than three or four. I kind of wore myself out while I go, but. Let's get it moved and I'll show you using it, or show me using it rather.